I want you to begin tonight as we turn to the Word of God by following as I read Matthew chapter 7, verses 21 to 27. Matthew chapter 7, verses 21 to 27. Here are the words of our Lord Jesus Himself. And they are stunning words, shocking words, and tragic words. Not everyone who says to Me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of My Father who is in heaven. Many will say to Me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy or preach in Your name? And in Your name cast out demons, and in Your name perform many miracles? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from Me, you who practice lawlessness." Your statement captures essential aspects of what many consider to be true Christianity. It emphasizes the importance of personal transformation, sincere commitment, and alignment with God's will. Christians are encouraged to regularly examine their lives, motives, and actions to ensure they align with God's standards. Verses like 2 Corinthians 13.5 say, Examine yourselves to see whether you are in the faith. Test yourselves. Self-reflection helps believers recognize their sins and weaknesses, fostering a deeper understanding of their need for God's grace and guidance. There's another element in this little list of attitudes that give people a false sense of assurance. Familiarity with biblical morality. Familiarity with biblical morality. They say, oh, hey, I'm, I don't deny what the Bible says. I, I believe in a biblical morality. I, I'm not pro-homosexual. I'm not anti-marriage. I'm not anti-family. I, you know, I, I agree with that. I think, um, I think sexual activity should be between a husband and a wife only inside marriage. And I, I hold that morality. I must be on my way to heaven. And there are lots of people who fit into this category. You know, take for example the Mormons. They say this is their way of life, although it doesn't always work out. So. I'm not certainly trying to twist the Scripture. I Look, I don't have any argument with the Bible. I actually, I don't, I don't know what it says, but I, uh, I think these are the kind of things that the Bible advocates, and I, I'm for them. And all these things are just a big deception because none of these things have anything to do with your salvation. None of them. The, the real issue is this. People who are deluded and deceived have failed to come through the narrow gate. They have failed to come through the narrow gate. What does that mean? Repentance for sin, confession of sin, submission to the Lordship of Christ, brokenness, humility, contrition obedience to the Word of the Lord no matter what. True repentance involves a heartfelt turning away from sin and a commitment to change one's behavior. Acts 3.19 encourages believers to repent then and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out. Repentance is about acknowledging one's sins and seeking God's forgiveness, as highlighted in 1 John 1.9. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Christians believe in surrendering their lives to Jesus Christ, acknowledging Him as their Lord and Savior. This involves trusting in His guidance and leadership. Romans 10.9 states, If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised Him from the dead, you will be saved. They are the ones who call themselves Christians because at some point when they were kids, they accepted Christ. We'll use that buzz phrase. Or they believed in God. 
They are uh, ignorant and they are uncommitted. I call them superficial because they have a superficial exposure to Christianity, some event in their life probably reinforced by their parents. They think there's a real connection to God because of that. But they're just kind of superficial. Um, it's all about a past event. They think they've put that to rest, they've settled that issue, they've taken care of that a sort of necessary item in their lives, and the only time you ever see them is on Christmas and Easter. When they roll into the church on Easter, you want to wish them Merry Christmas because you won't see them again till then. And then there are the uh, deceived who are not superficial, but the deceived who are very involved. They're all through the church. Uh, Jesus called them tares sown among the wheat. They know more about the church. They know about the life of the church. They're involved in the life of the church. They know a little bit about the Bible. They know Bible stories. They know what the new buzz phrase is, the Jesus narrative to some extent. They could tell you some Bible stories. They know a little bit of theology, just enough to be dangerous. But there's no real humility, there's no brokenness, there's no godliness. Submission requires aligning one's desires and actions with Christ's teachings, even when it's challenging. It's about prioritizing His will over personal ambitions. Christians are called to follow the teachings and commandments of the Bible. James 1.22 advises, do not merely listen to the Word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it saves yourselves. Do what it says. Obedience reflects true faith and love for God. John 14, 15 says, If you love me, keep my commands. Jesus warns that not everyone who claims to follow him will be recognized in the end. In Matthew 7, 21, 23, he says, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. True faith goes beyond mere outward appearances or verbal affirmations. It requires a genuine inner transformation and a life that bears the fruit of the Spirit. Christians are encouraged to be vigilant and continuously seek a deeper relationship with God, ensuring their faith is rooted in genuine commitment rather than mere tradition or superficial belief. Engaging regularly with scripture and prayer helps deepen one's understanding and connection with God. Being part of a faith community provides support, encouragement, and accountability in one's spiritual journey. Demonstrating Christ's love through service and compassion reflects genuine faith in action. Christianity is a lifelong journey of growing in faith, knowledge, and love for God and others. If you have any specific questions or need further exploration of these topics, feel free to ask.